Okay, can you talk to me, please? Uh, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Game Smash Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Wing Liberty, and with me is... Elijah Muhammad Yusuf. And today, we got some stuff. We got Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. Uh, we've got uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters, coverage of Tien, Yamcha, and Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. We got Cuphead Goes Platinum in two weeks, and Overwatch Halloween Event. But before I get into that, let's talk about what we played this week. Um, so, like I said last week, I got the uh, SNES Mini, and oh, yeah. um, I just we. It was funny because it's it's this problem where it's like, okay, I've got twenty one games. Which one do I play first, right? <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Uh, but then my sister chimed in and was like, I really want to. She really wanted to see Link to the Past, right? Because she really likes the Zelda games, right? Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, let's do Link to Link to the Past first. And you know what? It's it's a really good. Uh, it's obviously it's one of the classics. So yeah, it's a really good Zelda game. <laughs> just just plain and simple. Oh, um, yeah, Link, it's 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 re- what I what I was surprised is that the map is relatively small, but it's built to be that way, right? Because because this is before Epona was a staple, right? What's Epona? Uh, the horse. Oh yeah. So there was no like there was just flat out no horse. So it the the game actually the 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 like the world map actually needed to be relatively smaller than usual so that mm. you could it would it wasn't like oh god this is going to take an hour for me to get to my location, you know. It usually doesn't take you that long and there's a bunch of like creative ways that you can get around the map really easily. Like you well, at some point you get the Zora flippers and uh, you can go into whirlpools, and they'll they'll just bring you to certain parts of the map randomly. Well, not randomly, but they have like you go into this whirlpool, and they will bring you to this spot of the map. Mm. Um, so there's quick ways to travel across the map, even though there's not there's not like a Skyrim warping system, obviously, because that shit wasn't invented. Um, what I did notice that it was fu- it was kind of interesting was as I was going through the dungeons and like solving the puzzles, and you know. Because the game, because it, it plays a lot differently than, you know, when you think about, like, Ocarina of Time. Well, actually, this is an interesting experience with me, is that my experience with Zelda was, like, Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker. Uh, that was your first Zelda game? Uh, Ocarina of Time was technically my first Zelda game, now that I think about it. Damn. So, I never really got to play the classic, classic style of Zelda. So this was my first time experiencing it. And it it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. It's more. It's definitely more obviously grid based to a certain extent, in which like yeah. there's like room move from room to room to room. Um, some of the bosses are really freaking hard. <laughs> like goddamn, it took. And I will say this: like if I didn't have save states, I'd probably be a little bit annoyed at some of those boss oh fights. <laughs> I mean, to okay. To be fair, I I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying that I would have been annoyed. I'm not saying that the it, the bosses were unfair. Period. Um, yeah. Like the bosses. I think the bosses are actually relatively fair. It's just like sometimes it's just like a time saver to just instead of like starting at the beginning of the dungeon with half health, you know, when you die and you save and continue. It's yeah. kind of nice to just okay. I botched that boss attempt. Gonna just reload my save that I made before the boss room. Right. Yeah. Like so, because I think that's completely fair. Like I, 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 like I haven't done the really scummy thing, which is you, you make save states during the boss fight. <laughs> uh, what I've done not is a, yet. not yet. Haven't reached that point yet. But what I, what I usually do is that if I get to a boss room, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if I get to a boss room, I'll usually just, um, I'll usually just make a save state before it, so that it's like, okay, if I die to the boss, I'll give it another shot, right? Yeah. Um, but the game is a lot of fun. Uh, game's a lot of fun. Uh, that's really all I have to really say about it. Uh, um, I'm very excited to just keep kind of playing through that. Uh, the other thing I did, obviously we'll probably talk about a little bit later, is I played a bunch of the Overwatch Halloween event. 
Yeah. Uh, some of those skins are really, really good, and I was very happy because I got the Symmetra skin, which is... Yeah, Symmetra skin is dope. Is dope. It's real dope. And the gun is amazing, too. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, although I did have this moment where... Okay, so I play Overwatch relatively regularly. Like, I play maybe once a week, right? Um, so, obviously, there's a certain amount of downtime for players when there isn't an event happening. Yeah. So, when I booted it online, I was like, oh, God, the all the diamonds and challengers, and oh, God, these are the really high-tier players are all in quick play right now because they just want loot boxes. <laughs> Oh, no. So, I got my ass kicked for a good solid two hours. <laughs> God damn it, damn it. Uh, But uh, other than that, that's really what I played this week. What about you, Fawaz? Oh, yes, yeah, so I played a little bit more Infinite. Um, Ooh, okay. I, I went to the event and I played it played it again. I mean, the game is still fun, but, you know, we're getting, I've gotten to the point where um, it's not fun just playing the game. And now I, I, I'm at the point where I actually want to, like, get good with the game. But it's difficult to get good at a game you don't you don't own. So, so yeah. Fortunately, there wasn't there weren't a lot of people playing the game. I feel like the the hype in Ottawa has kind of died down. So I actually got some decent training mode time. I messed around with Jetta. I definitely think I'm gonna stick with Jetta, but I'm trying to find a teammate for him. I was playing Thanos last time. Um, I I'm trying out I'll try out Captain Marvel and mm -hmm. um strider i was gonna try out dr strange but then this one dude hopped on the station it's actually really funny okay so there's a uh, do you know the option select is uh i've heard of it i don't know the exact details okay so in fighting games an option select is when you pre it's when you do one move that covers two options right so the best example i can think of is a safe jump oh crap too many terms okay so um <laughs> the best example i can think of is um so like in street fighter 4 ryu you could do this thing where you knock an opponent down right right and you walk up to them you do jab sweep jab right right and then if they sit there and they block jabs come out and your opponent has to block the jabs then you put them in a in a in a block string right right if they wake up and they backdash the jab whips and the sweep comes out and it catches the backdash right so oh, that's an option okay. select you cover two options with one um with one move it sometimes it's more than two options but anyway okay. in real life this is like um it's like a joke option select where people they they they, they, they want to play a game with you but then they, they start talking about how they don't own the game. So, you know, if they win, so if they lose, they're like, well, I don't really own this game. And if they win, they're like, dude, I don't even own this game, right? <laughs> it's the option select. So this one guy sits with me, and I start kicking his ass, right? And then he hits me with the option select. He's like, that, dude, I don't even own this game. I'm like, he's, no, he's like, dude, I just bought this game last week. I'm like, dude, I don't even own this game. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that me. You're not going to hit me with that bullshit. I can't prepare it. <laughs> oh, man. Like, that always, that always amazes me when people do that. It's like, dude, just... Take that L and move on. <laughs> it's all right. It's like, I don't even own this game. <laughs> but, um, I'm not even, but, I'm not even really playing this game. Like, oh, look, I'm hitting buttons, but, uh, so your, your win is completely in It's like, fuck off. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, oh yeah, so, so there's actually a bug, not, not a bug, there's an infinite right now in the game, it's called, it's the Spider-Man infinite, right. so he can, like, loop, um, his web ball into reality stone into web ball infinitely, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like, uh, recently Capcom, their, their YouTube channel, sorry, their Facebook channel made a post talking about how, oh, you know, um, there's going to be a soft ban on the infinite at the, at the next tournament, if you do more than I think three reps, you are uh, automatically disqualified, right? Okay. Um, and everybody in the comment section said I'm getting mad at Capcom, right? Now you, I love getting mad at Capcom as much as the next guy. Um, but what made me laugh was that people are talking about how, oh, you know, um, Capcom used to be better than this. You know, why aren't you like fixing this infinite? And I'm sitting there like, okay, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like I said. I was shit on Capcom as much as anybody, right? Mm -hmm. But complain about Infinite in a versus game? Let me explain something to you, Tyler. Other than Ryu and Chun Li, Infinites are the only thing that I've carried over between every single versus game. Yeah. Like, there's literally been Infinites in all of them. That's the only constant. 
so because I'm I'm confused. So they're complaining that there is an infinite combo string, and my question is, has it that always been like a staple of the series? Like Marvel, when I think when I think Marvel three, it like Marvel versus Capcom three. Uh, or like ultimate or whatever. I usually think of those ridiculously long combo strings. Yeah, no, no. Infinite have always been a part of the game. So like, here's the thing for me. Like, okay, if you if you if you're like that, God, I wish Capcom would patch out this infinite. I'm not gonna criticize you because here's the thing. As much as they've been a constant in the game, I don't think I've met anybody that actually likes infinite. I don't think anyone likes doing them. I don't think like anyone likes getting hit by them. So, yeah, no, I I, so. I understand that aspect. But yeah, at the same, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, what? it's it's um, it's just one of those things where I find fascinating that people are complaining. This is this is fascinating to me because a, it is kind of a staple. Like when I think about infinite combos, the first thing I think about is Marvel versus Capcom, and the other things like <laughs> literally the game is called Infinite. Dude, dude, I was I was building up to that punchline, but now you. Just I stole it because I knew it's it way too obvious. The low hanging. <laughs> Okay, okay. But yeah, like, like, I was, like I was saying, I have, you know, if you're going to be like that dog, I don't like these infinites. I'm not going to be like, no, no, you have to like them because they were in Marvel 3. That's mm-hmm. bullshit, right? I right. don't even like infinites. But for me, what made me laugh wasn't the fact that people were like, because Capcom actually released a patch today, a day after they made that post, that is supposed to fix the infinite, right? right. So for me, what, what made me laugh wasn't the fact, it wasn't the fact that people were like, God, I wish this infinite wasn't in the game. The fact that people were acting like Capcom has a good track record of fixing <laughs> infinite versus games. Right. Because they don't. Like, this is the one thing that they've stayed consistent with. In, in fact, they've actually stepped it up because they, they actually patched this one out. They never patched out infinite. They just mm-hmm. used to leave them in. Okay, they patched out the whatever. I'm getting into, like, really detail here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I played Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. However, the other game I played this week, um, I'm going to give you three guesses, but I don't think you ever guess what it is. Okay. Can you give me like a ge- give me a genre? Uh, can you give me? If I give you the genre, you'll get it. You'll get it. Okay. Uh, can you give me some sort of tiny hint that might not give it away? Because it's. <laughs> I can't even give you the developer because if I give you the developer, okay, okay, let me think. I mean, it came out in twenty sixteen. What year? Twenty seventeen. It came out in twenty. No, that that's not gonna help at all. Um, it was one of my most anticipated games. Street Fighter, five. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you played Street yeah. Fighter Five? Oh yeah, dear I, God! I, I figured out how to re-download the game after like a good six months of trying. I finally figured it out. So here's the thing: remember how I told you that I'd go into my library mm-hmm. and all I would see was the story mode DLC? Right. Turns out it was the story mode DLC that I had to I had to download. In my defense, I looked at this file and it said eight gigs, and I was like, "Well, it's eight gigs. That can't be Street Fighter Five. It has to be somewhere else." But then, uh, I don't know. It's Capcom. I don't know. I'm going to blame this on Capcom. Capcom. Yeah, yeah. So if, okay, okay. Wait, wait. What was that one guy? What was that one guy? He was like, he was like I don't even play Capcom games. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 down, I was like, let me download this story thing, and maybe the game will show up. And then after I downloaded the story thing, the game just downloaded automatically. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I played it a little bit. I was, I was just practicing Yuri and... Um, um, yeah, I just, I, I just messed around with it because of our first bit of news. How's our first segue? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Capcom finally confirmed the rumor that has been going on for like six months. There's an arcade edition of Street Fighter Five coming. It's coming on the 16th of January. Now, mm-hmm. now the first reaction to this was uproar. So people like that, oh, Capcom, you know, you're doing your Capcom thing. However, mm-hmm. I went back and I looked at what they said when Street Fighter Five launched. And what they said, and I quote, was that you, okay, I'm not quoting, I'm paraphrasing. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You will only ever have to buy one copy of Street Fighter V. And reading the notes on the arcade edition, they are holding true to that statement. Because mm-hmm. every single, the arcade edition patch is going to be free. All the new modes, the UI updates, um, all that stuff is going to be free. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, obviously the characters will be free. If you buy if you buy Arcade Edition, you're gonna get all the characters and stuff on it. But for like us plebs that bought it bought the game early, we we still have to buy them with fight money. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you know like um, I, I like I I always. I always credit companies for trying to fix their mistakes. You know, mm-hmm. I was reading an article recently about Final Fantasy fourteen. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, fourteen. 
Final Fantasy XIV, talking about how it is, um, it just reached a recent peak, like 12 million subscribers, which is like yeah. five, 3 million less than World of Warcraft had at its all-time high. Yeah. And I, I thought that was really interesting, because when Final Fantasy XIV launched, it was a, it was a train wreck. It was, know, oh, year, yeah. It, it, yeah. that, that's a that's a perfect example is like the game that's like when you see where it started and where it's at now it's it's night and day like it's it's crazy how much they improved and but yeah. but final fantasy 14 is the it, it's a scenario where literally they had to destroy everything about the original 14 launch and like literally there is an event in the story that wipes the world clean essentially oh, I didn't know that. yeah so because they so they added story based reason to essentially wipe the entire world and start fresh in a realm <laughs> we born <laughs> they were like okay so we shot the bed with the first game so we're just going to start afresh but, yeah um yeah. but yeah now capcom is not doing anything so drastic with street fighter 5 in fact the first thing i checked when they announced a the ui update was whether the clipping issues were still there and sure enough they're still there yeah. Kev's hair and burgess chain and there's something i think uh, rashid's backpack there's a couple of things that clip on the character select screen they still clip so i'm like god damn it capcom but other than that they're yeah. adding a new arcade mode um what i couldn't get as much info as i would have liked about the arcade mode but what i do get is that um it's going to be it's not going to just be a half assed code as a bunch of characters you beat them and then and then you know you get an ending there's going to be a bunch of different like arcade packs there's an arcade there's a street fighter arcade pack there's a street fighter 2 alpha street fighter 3 mm -hmm. street fighter 4 street fighter 5. i'm not entirely sure what that means if it means you're only going to be fighting characters from those respective games or yeah I i'm not sure um we still don't have a lot of info about it um um the other thing that they added is oh, what was it called again Crap, I thought I saved it. Sorry, I'm doing this live right now. Well, um, um, I know I was I, I read somewhere that it allows you to pick what type of arcade you want to do, like Street Fighter. Like, I don't know if it's because different path, I guess. Do you want to fight the people from Street Fighter 1's order, 2's order, uh, Third Strike's order? I'm not sure if that's how that works. But I know that there is some. You can go down multiple different paths, I guess, with different characters. And I know that I know in the article that I did read that there's apparently like a hundred different endings. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's good. Um, uh, the other thing is that every character is getting um, is is getting a new V trigger. Mm -hmm. So every character is getting a brand new V trigger. Uh, which which uh, I don't know because because they say V trigger moves, so I don't know if they mean. V trigger, V skill, and V reversal, or if it's just a brand new V trigger. But I, I laughed about it because I was like, there's some characters that you know just don't even waste your time because there's unless you unless the new V trigger you give them is gonna be completely broken, there's no way they're using the new V trigger. Nakali, Yurian, and um, what's her name? Armika. I don't see any world where they give them a V trigger good enough for them to switch off their current V triggers. Um, I have heard that the V trigger that Armika gets allows you to play as the other girl for like a second. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see how good it doesn't. That doesn't sound very good on paper, but we'll see how good it it, 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 it is in practice. Well, I mean that sounds good. cool to me in general. Like yeah, but like her current V trigger is insane. Oh, I know, I know. It's, it definitely it's going to be one of those things like, okay, is this new option, is it worth trying? Is it is it worth even, like, practicing with it, you know? Is it a good, yeah. is, it, is it good enough to be, like, a mix-up, or is it, like, not as viable, or not even as, like, effective as the as the original? Which is a yeah. shame. I hope, I hope that it, they're at least, like, relatively the same level of quality, I guess, because it's always, it's always a bummer when something new comes out and it looks really, really cool, but in practice, it's not really worth using. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, because you know, we'll just use Street, Super Street Fighter 4 as an example, right? Super Street Fighter 4, there were some characters, and here's the thing, and also this is what they do. Some characters had two v two, two ultimates that did two very different things. Mm -hmm. So people picked different ultimates based on different matchups. Capcom did a really good job with that. I give mm -hmm. them credit. Because um, I, 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 I'm trying to think if there was any character that just always locked in one ultimate. There probably mm -hmm. is. I just can't think of them off the top of my dog. I haven't played this game in like almost 10 years now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know that a lot of characters actually switch their ultimates pretty frequently. Sagat, he switched between both of his ultimates. Um, Zangief, um, um, what's her name? Um, Tami, Chun-Li, 
Ryu, a lot of them switch between the alternates pretty frequently based on the matchup. Mm-hmm. So if they can do something similar to, similar um, with the V-Triggers, then that would be nice. I'm not going to hold out hope because this yeah. is still Capcom. But, uh, but yeah, the other thing that they announced was that there's going to be this new mode called Extra Battle. Um, now, I'm just going to read the... the, the um, the quote in extra battle mode a new series of exclusive challenges will be available will be available for players to use their fight money for the chance to receive an exclusive premium outfit each month complete all four challenges each month and receive a special premium costume exclusive to this mode and in Ooh. the press release that's the word i was looking for in the press release there's a um gold license i think that's a gold license no it's not a gold license um there's a beautiful jewel costume Ooh. It, there's a, yeah it's a beautiful joke costume for who I believe is Rashid. Um, so, so yeah, it's going to be cool, unique costumes like that that you can get for technically for free. You have to pay um, fight money. But that's the thing with the fight money. Um, the impression I'm getting is that if you actually play the game, getting fight money shouldn't be too difficult. I don't um, think it's relatively difficult. Like, it's one of those things where it's like... I would say with the fight because I I I I remember playing a little bit of Street Fighter Five back in the back in the day, um, and one of the things I did notice is that like the fight money I think was it was good it it was balanced if you played the game regularly like if I played if I played Street Fighter Five as much as I played Overwatch for example I would have no yeah. problem unlocking like costumes and modes and stuff like that so yeah that's so what I'm thinking. Um, at least that's what I hope. I, that they at least got that right. Yeah, um, but the, I, I like the I like the idea of these premium costume things because if they're branching out, I would love to get a Monster Hunter costume in Street Fighter Five. Come on, see that one coming. come on, give me that, give me that. He Monster uh, Hunter made it into Marvel Infinite. Give me some Monster Hunter costumes. Come on. So now the most exciting part of this uh, announcement actually is. The, is, are the implications for Marvel's Capcom Infinite? Mm-hmm. Um, so when Marvel Infinite was announced, I, you know, like I've said on multiple occasions that I that I wish I had that if I hadn't bought Street Fighter Five at launch, I'd be playing the game now, right? right? Because for me, after they fixed everything, I was just so spurned from how shitty the game was at launch that I was like, "Fuck you guys!" Yeah, you know. So that's probably the reason why at a certain point i was just like okay you know what i'm not going to buy marvel versus capcom infinite i'm just going to wait so if this happens and um i, I think there's a good chance it's going to happen although on the flip side i have this bad habit of always supporting um the 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 game that gets less support um yeah i just i didn't buy battleborn um sorry sorry last game last day and i'm done um but, but yeah, I always have this bad, this bad luck with that. You know, like Marvel 3 versus Street Fighter 4. Marvel 3 literally got no support. Street Fighter 4 got all the support. Um, Modern Nation Research versus Little Big Planet. Let's not even get into that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Gears of War versus Halo. Gears of War did get support. It just never got as much as Halo. So that, you know, I've always gotten the, the I want to say, I want to say short end of the stick, but I've always followed the quote-unquote less popular of the two. When the, of, of the two, like, uh, franchises. So... Mm-hmm. I wouldn't hold my breath, but if this does happen for Infinite, I'd definitely be all up in there, like, straight up. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's sad to say, but it's, like, for a lot of people, the people who waited, they are going to get a beneficial package. Like, you're... So, the people who waited and didn't buy Street Fighter Five at launch, they have this new edition. It comes with a much bigger cast of characters, it comes with more maps, more modes, the arcade mode, and a story mode. And, like, there's just so much more content in this that it... it like, I, I, I like that it's fixed. Like, I will always say this. Give credit where credit is due. I like the fact that now Street Fighter V is in a better position than it ever was. Um, but there is always going to be that little bit of bittersweetness to it in the sense where it's like, if they had just delayed the game... If they had just delayed the game, we would have probably... They wouldn't even... Like, if, imagine if it's like they delayed the game, like, by another year. Kind of like what Cuphead did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and had the arcade mode, for example, right, at launch. Not even the story mode, but just have the arc- this arcade mode at launch. That would have made a big difference. Like, it would have made the launch of Street Fighter V a lot more easier for a lot of people to, you know, 
consume, digest, digest yeah. I guess, is what I'm saying. But at the same time, I am glad to see that it has come around. And it does make me fascinated with Marvel uh, Marvel Infinite in the sense where it's like, I, I am with you 100% in which, yeah, I can see, similar to Street Fighter V, a year or two from now, Marvel Infinite Super Edition, or Double Infinite, is going to come out. It's gonna have, and it's gonna have like a continuation. It's gonna have like a sequel story mode. It's gonna have like a big, a bunch of new features. It's gonna have a much better cast, right? It's gonna have Monster Hunter. It's gonna have Monster Hunter, which already makes it an amazing game. <laughs> Dude, it, it's fast. I am. I there's nothing more fascinating to me than the words. Monster Hunter is top tier in Marvel Infinite. It's so fascinating to me. That's going to be interesting to see. I want um, I want to see somebody win <laughs> like a tur win, win Evo win, win Evo Monster with Monster Hunter. That would be the best. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, one last thing to mm. touch on with the Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition announcement. Um mm. it was just a really funny post that I found on Reddit. Uh this one dude this one with screen caps it post from August 6, 2013, where Tomoaki Ayano, the uh, producer at Capcom, says that the road to the fifth Street Fighter title will be long and arduous. Explains the new Ultra Street Fighter 4 characters are not simple rips from Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Mm -hmm. Also confirms that we will not get a single Street Fighter, we will not get Street Fighter 5 until 2018, at least. Now, obviously, that didn't happen. We got Street Fighter 5 in 2016. However, yeah. the joke here is that he's in senior... Because the, 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 the title of the thread is rare footage of Capcom actually keeping their word. Yeah, so yeah. He's in, so yeah, he's insinuating that, you know, like, we, we actually got Street Fighter V in 2018 and the game that we bought in 2015 was actually just like an open beta or something. So, yeah, pretty much. So, so, yeah, I you know, you actually, you know that. what? In in all honesty, the the version that we bought was a early access. <laughs> That's what it was. Um, but yeah, you know, Street Fighter, Street Fighter. Uh, but speaking of more fighting games, we got Dragon Ball C Fighters coverage of Tien, Yamcha, Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. Yeah. So, um, Game Informer had like a month long thing on um on Dragon Ball fighters um so the first thing that they confirm is how to pronounce it and it's dragon ball fighters not dragon ball fighter z so you know just uh put a little note in that yeah the next thing they should have walk through of um tien and yamcha also of super saiyan blue goku and vegeta um but the two of them they um okay so i'll start with goku and vegeta so vegeta actually looks faster like maybe this is just like the placebo effect but mm -hmm. actually both of them look significantly faster they have some they have a lot of different moves they're different they're completely different characters you know goku has the one inch punch which is pretty cool he like dashes up to you and he puts like his fingers on your chest and he just like punches it's, it's pretty cool uh so both of them have level three that you can spend two bars for to do extra damage similar to gohan's um father son kamehameha mm -hmm. um uh what's it called vegeta's big bang attack is a special move now um right. uh other than that, everything else that they showed isn't really worth um, touching on. I, I don't think there's really nothing. There was nothing. Uh, there was nothing else that was really special. Tien and Yamcha, though. Uh, mm -hmm. So Yamcha is pretty much exactly what we thought he was from the description. He's a very rushed down heavy character. Mm -hmm. He's got records that can chain into like crossovers and overheads and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. One of his supers, he releases like a, an orb that he can control. It moves really fast, though. It moves a lot faster than I thought it would move. I'm not sure of the application of that, but yeah. all in all, he looks he looks strong, which is something I never thought I would say in yeah. regards to Yamcha. Similar to Monster Hunter winning Evo, I want to see Yamcha win Evo more yeah. than anything in this world. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tien, however, so they showed Tien, and um, apparently he's not complete. The version that they, I mean, no, I, I don't think any of the characters are complete, but as far as incomplete characters go, Tien was, you know, on the lower end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, so they showed some of his moves. He looks like he'd have a he, he looks like. Of all the characters shown, it looks like he has one of the more unique combo um, routes. Okay. So I'm looking forward to seeing people uh, get their hands on him. What was really interesting, though, is his level three, right? The one where he puts his palms together. Yeah, and he, Kiko. Like, yeah, the Kiko Shen. No, I'm Ki gonna, yeah. fuck. Uh, fuck, what I, is it called? What is it called? <laughs> 
so while he's figuring that out, um, so <laughs> so he does the move and it does damage, but there's two interesting things about it. Number one is that it costs HP. Every time he does the blast, it takes a, a, a chunk of his health. Mm-hmm. And actual health here. So it's not like blue health that you can tag out and recover. Straight up HP. You're not getting that back unless you have Krillin. He throws out a sense of Yeah. Um, but then the second interesting part is that he can spend more bars similar to um, Krillin's destructive disc to do more damage. However, the more bars he spends, the more health it costs him. I watched someone, I just watched a video of someone doing like the raw super and he's using all seven bars to do it. Okay. He did about 80% damage to both characters. So I'm not, I'm not I, really I, I, sure I was, just... yeah, I just looked it up right now. It's called Kiko Ho. Uh, and I want to say the fact that it deals damage to you is actually amazing because that's exactly what it does in the show. Is oh, that no, 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 as no. when Tien uses it? There's a specific moment in the Cell Saga in which Tien uses the Kiko Ho and absolutely is wrecking the shit out of Cell, like uh, second form, and he is barely able to like he almost kills himself with how much damage it's doing to his body. <laughs> uh, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, okay. That's a pretty cool like detail, and I actually like when they. I I like the fact that there's stuff like that they're doing in this game that is like mechanically, it's like it it fits in with how the move would work in the show and how it yeah. they've implemented into the game like that. It's super cool. But, I mean, are you really surprised anymore? I'm not really surprised. This this game looks fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the clip of um the clip of him doing all um yeah he, he does he does all seven he uses all seven bars mm-hmm. and it almost kills him so um i don't really know how useful it'll be but you know i mean hey it's an option right yeah having more options is always good the other thing is that he can um he can he can summon chats chatsu 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 yeah right. now when i read about it i wasn't sure if it was a situation like um 17 mm-hmm. or a situation like Zato or if right. it was just a situation if if it, if it was just like a special move and uh, it's 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 option three it's it's just a special move you know um mm-hmm. i was i mean like the idea because you can call both assists at the same time so the idea of having a puppet character in this game would probably make things a little too too insane mm-hmm. um but I was still kind of disappointed. But, well, I mean, uh, like, it's Chatsu. Like, there's not a whole lot you can do with them. The most notable <laughs> thing Chatsu does is grab people and blow himself up. Okay, you see, like, okay, you know, this is this is where we make a good team here. Because, mm. like, I, um, I don't know shit about the anime. So, you know, I'm telling you all the gameplay stuff, and you're just like, okay, cool. This is how it applies to the um, the show, I, the show, right? Exactly. No, but I I understand where you're like your disappointment in the sense, man, I wish he could have done more. And it's like I totally agree with you, but if they're keeping in if they're keeping in tone with the show, you know, because it's Dragon Ball, then realistically, yeah, Chatsu unfortunately doesn't really do a whole lot of cool stuff. But I do like the fact that he's there doing stuff along Tien because that actually fits his character quite well. Yeah. Yeah, um, and the other, the other thing, um, oh yeah, the other thing, this, this is a little bit, on a, this is on, on a little, little bit of a, this is a, this is a little more worrisome, that's the word, that, that's the phrase I, I was, wow. I was going for, um, mm-hmm. so I, it was Dual Shockers, they did a, um, they did, they did a, an article on the, on the game, and mm-hmm. it's in the, in the article, they, they mentioned that there is only going to be about 18 characters at launch. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I don't know how true this is. Um, so, my I, question, what, what's the frustration with 18 characters at launch? It's a 3v3 fighting game. 18 characters at launch? That's awful. Like, that's just straight up awful. 3v3. Um, okay so, okay okay well this yeah, is something but like it's like okay this is something interesting where it's like i i because but i i have completely different like 
stakes in this game to a certain extent i would rather have 18 quality characters and every character that they've shown has been beyond my expectations this is true that i like i understand from a from a more fighting community and more gameplay mechanic then yes the the problem with having a smaller roster is that especially in a 3v3 game is that you're going to be seeing a lot of the same characters like that's just flat out what's going to happen right yes at the same time it's like i'm willing to take that sacrifice than rather have a bunch of like like the worst thing that could happen is that they just made a bunch of clones right yeah it's like and yeah. it's just yeah it's got a bigger roster and you're not seeing the same people all the time but like 70 percent of the cast is great but 30 percent of the cast is just boring and bland and just repeats so i'm yeah, yeah so it's kind of like it's a double-edged sword either way you know no, no, I, I, I agree with you, but for me, it's just like, um, um, okay, so, so look at Marvel 3. I'll use Marvel 3 as an example, right? Okay. Like, by the end of Marvel 3's life, every other team you play against has Doom on it, right? Right, okay. Straight up. Now, Marvel 3, despite what people say, Marvel 3 actually had a decent amount of character variety. I just saw that I did the math, and there were over 20 to 20, like, two or three characters that um, were quote unquote competitively viable, right? And okay. you would see a, a, a decent amount either playing online or watching tournaments, right? Right. That is more character. The issue with Marvel 3 wasn't the um, amount of characters. The issue was that Doom, very few characters did what Doom did. Yeah, and yeah. So he became he became are... like the staple of the series in a yeah, lot of exactly. reasons, a lot of ways. Yeah, he's got a character like like um 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 Zero, who's a really strong point character, but there are a bunch. There's like ten other like strong, not as strong, but strong point characters that you could play. You could play Spencer. You could play Wolverine. You could play Magneto. You could play um Doom in some mm-hmm. No, not really. Um. You can play Magneto, there's a bunch of other I can't think of off the top. So Firebrand, there's a bunch of other I can't think of off the top of my head, right? Hey, Gar, there right. we go. They're all coming back to me, right? So there were options you had. Oh, Doom, if you had an assist character, you had three options. Doom, Samuel, or Dante. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a couple others you can toss in there that are kind of like, you know, lukewarm options. But those are your main three options right there, right? right. That's my worry. If the game launches with like 18 characters, right? You think about 3v3 games. So that's 18 divided by 3. What, 6? That's like 6, you know, straight up unique team compositions you can make at launch, right? You don't take into fact that, let's be honest, five of these, like, at least five of these characters are not going to be good. Like, at least. Probably more, mm-hmm. right? That's just, that's just fighting games. There's always right, going to be yeah. those characters that are just not very good. So... Mm-hmm. So then you take five out, you're dealing with 13. 13 characters in a 3v3 fighting game. That's just not a lot of characters. Now, mm-hmm. like I said, um, he's probably incorrect. They've revealed, I think, two characters every month since launch. And okay. We, we've got October, November, December, January. Okay, we've here's here's my months. here's my question. How many characters are we at at the moment? 16. 16. It's 21, 16. Well, actually, that's 15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like, to be fair, like, yeah, he might have the number wrong, uh, for all we know. Um, but also this is another thing, it's at launch, right? So it's not even that, like I said, it's not even the situation in which it's like, okay, is that just going to be flat out who we're going to get for the rest of the game? It's like, probably not. There's most certainly, there's most certainly going to be DLC characters down the road, similar to Street Fighter. So we're oh, yeah. like the roster's gonna get bigger, absolutely, and that will probably and that'll probably help with what you're talking about, which is basically the repetitions of certain seeing certain teams over and over and over again. Um. So yeah, yeah I, I, I I don't know. Like it's like it's weird because I understand your your worry about that, but at the same time, I guess it just doesn't bother me because that's not how I'm gonna be enjoying the game. <laughs> Yeah, but let me, let, me, let me give you a different angle at that, right? Mm-hmm. 18 characters means a lot fewer chances for you to find a character you actually like playing. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at all the characters now and they all look fine and dandy, right? But then, but then you start playing the characters and you're like, oh, none, of these characters, none of these characters interest me. Oh, wait, we're talking about that I'm done with all 18, right? You know, I don't... It's, it's, so it's, it's like... 
it's it's just not a lot of options, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure, sure, like I said, they all they all look cool aesthetically, but even like even aesthetically speaking, there's a lot of similarities between some of these characters. Goku and Vegeta do look kind of similar, you know. Gohan already looks like shit. Now, obviously, I'm jumping the gun and a lot of I'm jumping the gun and all of this, right? This is probably not even true. It's yeah, I was going to say, like, and you know what? Yeah. I don't even fucking care if Gohan's probably is not the competitively viable. I want to play as fucking Gohan because he's fucking Gohan. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see, you see, you see, he says that. And then, and then, and then we, we come back on the podcast. He's like, yeah, so I played with Gohan. And, you know, like, like he's fucking <laughs> Gohan. But you know what's not fun? Losing. <laughs> Losing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, is that I, you think I'm going to be playing this game online? Fuck no! I'm going to get absolutely wrecked. I'm going to play this game with my friends. I'm going to play this game with my one friend who barely plays fighting games, so we will be on an even playing field, and I'll probably have a blast. That is bullshit. No, not against you, God no. If I play against you, I'm going to get destroyed no matter who the fuck I pick. <laughs> good. Like I said, this is different standards. You have to understand that it's like... I am excited for this game for a very specific reason. So, like I said, I'm not disagreeing with you. Like, a smaller roster in a 3v3 game uh, is definitely worrisome. But it's not as, like, damaging as, like, the bad roster in Marvel vs. Infinite, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, but that's that's what I mean. It's like, I, t- I totally agree with you, completely. Like, if... Oh, you put Marvel Infinite. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, come on. It's it's our it's our dead horse that we beat every week at this point. I mean, Battleborn's dead. We gotta do something, Flaws. Come on. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's probably incorrect. I mean, we've still got four months left to mm-hmm. launch. Um, so if what he's saying is true, we're getting like three characters in four months. I just don't see that happening. Yeah. Uh, with that said, I am starting to come to the realization that this roster is... Like, even if he ends up being incorrect, which I think he is going to be, the roster is not going to be as big as I thought it... As I thought slash hoped it was going to be. And I... um. That is kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. You know, like let's see the final roster before we start yeah. complaining about it. Let's not. I was gonna say, on. I was gonna, if we, like realistically, for was that there is this roster is pretty damn awesome, all things considered. Like, I mean, okay, I, here's the thing: the roster, the roster isn't bad right now. It's just obvious, right? Well, yeah, and but it's and like was, they're like, getting the obvious people out of the way. Which is yes, yes, important. Yes, 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 yes. See, I'm not disagreeing with that, right? You know, I'm just saying that, okay, so let's say, hypothetically speaking, two characters a month, four months, we get eight characters between now and the end, right? One of those is probably going to be Goten, one of those is probably going to be Adult Gohan, right? Right, yeah. So, at six characters, that's six slots for the quirky, unique characters that I was hoping for, right? That's, let's say, six of them, one of them is Broly, so then that's five. But like, you know, um, you, so you get what I mean, right? Is that, no, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you mean to a certain extent. Yeah. It's like, it's... I mean, here's the thing. I, 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 I like to think I'm consistent, you know? I criticized Infinite for this when, the, when, the, when they were showing the roster. I was like, that, you know, the roster isn't bad. It's just obvious, right? So I was hoping for more quirky characters from, you know, some of Capcom's quirkier games. And then, you know, and they were like, you want quirky characters? Arthur. And I'm like, okay. You know what? I asked for this, but yeah, but, yeah. Um, I guess it's true. I guess it's true. But yeah, I, you know, I, I'm just trying to be consistent, and I criticize Capcom for that. So at the same time, I'm like, yes, you know. Yeah, you um, want you want to criticize, you know, Dragon Ball Z fighters for like, for okay, you you, you yeah, for the okay. exact same thing. But it's I'm just I'm just saying like, for like it's like the thing about it's like there's like it, it's i don't know if it's the same level of exhaustion that i felt with the 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 roster in no, infinite no. as far as like because like for god's sakes i've been getting excited because yamcha's in this game i'm <laughs> super hyped to play as yamcha and that should never that should not be a thing <laughs> yeah no it's not the same it's not the same at all because like like Arthur, when when Arthur was announced for Marvel Three, I was like, "Oh, that's cool! I'm never gonna play this character." But props to you guys for adding mm-hmm. a quirky character to this game. When yeah. Modok was added, I was like, "That's pretty cool." When those guys, okay, well, Modok wasn't added to Infinite, but you know, when Arthur was then added to when okay, Arthur and Firebrand were added to Marvel Three, I was like, "Those are quirky characters. I'm never mm-hmm. going to play as them." But I give them credit for picking these quirky characters. Yeah. When they were re-added to yeah. Infinite, I was like, "That's lazy." 
Capcom. That's so yeah. No, it's not yeah. on the same level. It will never be on the same level because at the end of the day, they're building all these characters from scratch, right? So yeah, that's that's just, the other thing. It will never be on the same level as Infinite because every character in this game was built from scratch. But I was just throwing that out there. But like I said, it's probably not even true. Like we're probably gonna finish with. I was expecting like twenty four characters, so twenty four, twenty five. Like ideally, I wanted thirty, but I was being realistic considering how long it takes to build one of. Yeah, these characters. especially so we, considering how good these characters look on screen. Yeah, like, I was like, okay, yeah. realistically speaking, twenty four. If I can get a twenty four character roster at launch, mm -hmm. I can live with that. You know, mm -hmm. so we're at fifteen now. Sixteen if twenty one actually ends up being a playable character. So eight characters, two character, two characters a month, four months between now and launch. Eight characters, twenty four is looking very, very realistic. Um, yeah. So let's 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 hope that ends up being the case. Uh, and um, yeah, you know, good shit. Good. I just want to make this clear, you know, I'm still excited for this game. I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm tempering my expectations. You just, you, know? you, you, you just, you, you, you are, you're hoping for a bigger roster so that you don't get the, 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 the 3v3 problem in which it's like, because you're seeing yeah, six, yeah. you're seeing six characters every single game, you're going to be seeing a lot of the same a lot, which is the unfortunate, yeah. it's, it's, it's the unfortunate plague of 3v3 fighters. Like a 1v1 yeah. fighter doesn't usually have this problem. Like if a one yeah, v I, like like Street Fighter, how many characters were in Street Fighter Five when it came out? Sixteen. Sixteen, right? But that wasn't really that big. That wasn't really that bad of an issue because it's like it's one v one. It's one v one. Blaze Blue launched with twelve. Yeah. Blaze launched with twelve characters, and I was like, it's fine, um, because it was a one v one fighter. But yeah, twelve twelve guys in a three v three game. Fuck out of here. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to talk about uh, Cuphead? Yes, 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 yes. So, Cuphead. Um, Cuphead recent, recently, I think it released two weeks ago, and it has already gone platinum, so yeah. that's, you know, a million copies for those for those of you that don't know, what, for the three of you that don't know what that mm -hmm. means. What that means. Um, mm -hmm. So, shout out to these developers, man. It's nice to see, it, in, a, in a time where, like, we're surrounded by developers who half-ass everything, mm -hmm. it's very nice to see a developer putting maximum effort into a game and getting maximum reward this game was i mean like you mentioned a couple like an hour ago this game was delayed like it was yeah, delayed so much we got to the point where we were criticizing them for the like i was just criticizing them for the delays i was criticizing them for announcing release dates and then delaying yeah. right um but yeah it got to the point where we we didn't like we didn't even talk about it on the podcast anymore because we were like okay these guys are just you know um talking about now so i'm just going to wait for well at the out. same time i was like i was like okay the delays suck but at the same time i'm watching the animation on display and going that must have taken a long fucking time to do because oh, yeah. god I mean, damn you just, watch, you just watch footage of this game and it's like this was not easy and it's also a small development team. I think it was like two. It, um, yeah, I think for, like I'm looking here at the credits, and mm -hmm. it's most of the people have the same last name. So I feel yeah, I feel like it's yeah. like family project. It, it, it well, s speaking of it, like this is I don't think this is on the docket, but at the same time, like I'm really glad this game was successful because the developers pointed out they were mortgaging their yeah. homes <laughs> because they yeah. were running out of money. And they really needed this game to be successful, um, because it would have great, it would have drastically affected their lives. So I'm glad to see yeah, that. Yeah, probably flipping burgers at Burger King now. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh... And yeah, they're Canadian, by the way. <laughs> 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 um, um, yeah, Toronto, Ontario, and Saskatchewan. Uh, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad to hear this. I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, and it's funny how I, how I found out about this headline. I was on the R Kappa Reddit. For the record, don't go there. It's a cesspool. It's actually no, a cesspool. Did not go but there. the highest rated um, thread there is my face when I see Cuphead selling 1 million copies while MDCI is bombing hard. And it's just a picture of Cuphead looking smug, sipping from a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But yeah, no, it's good. I'm glad to see Cuphead is successful. It's a very, it's a very, very brutal, difficult game. Um, it is very interesting. The discussion about Cuphead is fast. It is very fascinating to me because it's been getting really, it's been getting good reviews. Um, but it's very defi decisive amongst people who are playing it. Um, in, uh, in the sense, 
in the sense that it's like people either like the trial error um, difficulty mm-hmm. of it or they hate it, you know? Yeah. I, I hate it, like, straight up. I, I don't like trial and error difficulty. Yeah. But that's what I mean, yeah. is that there's a lot of people that really, really don't like that. But that doesn't mean I'm, I, I, I know that there are people who still like that gameplay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. And I can see yeah. there's a de- there's a definitely, there's definitely a lot of value in that. You know, it's, to a certain extent, it's like, when I think about some of the harder sequences in some of the earlier Souls games, like, some of that is a bit of trial and error. You kind of have to go through the same sequence over and over again until you get it right. This is just a little bit more intense. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's still really, really cool, but interesting. Uh, but the last thing on, on our list, we've got the Overwatch Halloween event. Yes, yes, yes. So, mm-hmm. as is customary at this point, you know, we've got a brand new event, and uh, this time it's for Halloween. It looks it looks pretty cool. We've got a bunch of new skins. So, Reaper got a second legendary because, you know, he's a, re- he's a resident um, Halloween expert. So, you yeah. know, it makes sense. He got a Dracula skin this year. Mm-hmm. Um I'm just going to go through the skins, and I'm, yeah. I'm probably going to double up. Okay, no, no, they, they filed them into the new and old, so that's fine. Okay, so, um, Anna got her first legendary. It's so funny, because all the Anna players on Reddit, the new, so, you know, the, like, Reddit goes through different uh, periods, where they have, like, different, because Reddit, Reddit is a giant hive mind, right? So they go through different periods where they have different things that they complain about. And the thing that they were complaining about now was that Blizzard has forgotten about Anna. Mm-hmm. You know, first of all, they nerfed her to the ground. They overbuffed Mercy, and now now she hasn't even gotten a legendary. There was one post actually a couple of days before the Halloween event that was counting the number of days since Anna was released, and she still doesn't have a legendary. But she has a legendary now, so y'all can shut up. Um, <laughs> it's a really cool pirate legendary. It's the pirate legendary from the comic, but it's they actually like unlike the one in the comic, they actually put effort into this one. It looks cool. The mm-hmm. gun, the gun looks cool. Her sleep yard gun looks awesome. She has a little pirate on her shoulder. And, you know, our, our old lady finally has her first skin, so I'm excited yeah, about it's... that. Mm-hmm. Zayada got a Cthulhu. I want to say Cthulhu. Oh, that's, it's Cthulhu. Skin. That skin is rad. It's this so is, good. This, this might be the best skin in the event, not just because of how good the skin is, but because of how things change. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, when he pops Transcendence and he has multiple arms with the skin, the arms become tentacles now, right? Oh, I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah, the arms become tentacles, but on top of that, a bunch of his voice lines change. Um, in fact, almost all of his voice lines change with this skin. Crap, I should have saved the, the there was a thread that had all the new voice lines, but mm-hmm. it's like experience, madness, madness becomes you. Um, oh, just... that's great. That's fantastic. Because oh, that's that's what Cthulhu. That's because Cthulhu, what Cthulhu lore is all about. It's about losing your mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so great. he um oh there one sec. Uh, no, that's not it. So yeah, yeah, he pretty much he pretty much becomes a different character as far as voice lines are concerned. Mm-hmm. So I think that was really cool. The next skin is um there we go, Reaper. He got a Dracula. I think that's a Dracula. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, Reaper got this Dracula yeah. skin. Um, um, oh, it's kind of it's, it's kind of underwhelming because here's the thing, right? Is that because Reaper's skins are also edgy. But yeah, just give him an edgy skin for Halloween. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like well, honestly, the weirdest thing about the the Dracula skin is more the fact that there's something weird about seeing Reaper without a hood, or like or some sort of like like for whatever reason it it it, it, it looks it looks like he's missing his hood. Like yeah. if he had some like spooky hood over it, I think I've actually I would I would be fine with it. But it's just it's kind of weird seeing him without it. Um, but uh, the other very vampire-themed uh, skin was uh, McCree's Van Helsing skin, which also oh, yeah. looks pretty dope. So McCree got a Van Helsing skin. That was pretty dope. I don't know if any of his voice lines changed. I, I imagine they probably would. Probably, um, yeah. Symmetric got a dragon skin. Looks amazing. Oh, I'm yeah. still never going to play this character, but it looks amazing. Oh, don't worry. I I got I was able to get the dragon skin, and I was so happy. I was... Has he changed to hooves, um, so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. May got a... Oh, hold on a sec. Jiangxi? Jiangxi skin? Mm-hmm. And unless I'm mistaken, this is what... Um, what's her name? Shenko is... Yeah, yeah, Zhang Xi is like a Chinese hopping vampire. Hopping yeah, yeah, vampire yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the it's the it's the vampire equivalent. Yeah, and Shenko um from Darkstalkers is I'm pretty sure Shenko is 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 this thing because it, it has like a little 
notes in front of the face and stuff and mm -hmm. you know it being made she's like completely adorable but yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry i got the 80s skin this shit had me dying when i oh, saw it oh yeah. my god it it goes so well with her emotes um it's just it's such it's so 80s well like, it also it fits the character really well and i'm gonna also say i think this is like the best Zarya skin for a very very long time because i think zarya hasn't really gotten any good skins in so long <laughs> like the anniversary event one was decent but I, this one is like this one kicks that one out of the water like this is, yeah, this this is fantastic pretty dope. um yeah she got she she got it has all the tropes of, of like 80s um so it's got like the neon colors her gun has like the baseline thing on the side of it she has that nasty haircut oh well, actually pretty cool hairdo that um mm -hmm. people had in the 80s yeah the headband on um, she has the knee socks. I, I don't know leg warmers. She's got leg warmers. Thank you. The leg warmers. She has the crop top. It's just it's just straight out of like a, like an eighties movie. You know you um, know what the best part about that skin is is that there's an equalizer on the gun. Yeah yeah that's what I was that's what I guess I, I called it the wrong thing but yeah there's an equalizer on the gun thank you Sam. yeah yeah we're wrong. Um, then Torbi I got a really good skin. He got a Viking skin. Mm -hmm. His hammer changes to Mjolnir. Um, yeah. I mean, Joey just has really good skin. So, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. And I think those are all the new skins. And we got a couple of new emotes. Um, Torbjorn, May, May. Okay, we got two new emotes. May got the hopping emote that goes with the Shang Jiangxi. And mm -hmm. then um, Torbjorn got a batter up emote. Uh, that's about it. So, just one quick note. It looks like they're going to stop making epics for events. Yeah. I think they are going to kind of stop making epics. Um, this is the third event in a row where we haven't gotten any new epics. Uh, I think it's one of those things where it's like they're putting so much time. In, it's one of those things where it's like an epic is kind of like um, for them. I think it's like a middle of the road where it's like we put uh, there's enough change in this to warrant it not being like a regular skin. But there's also also there's not enough change in it to make it a legendary. I guess yeah. that's how they see it. And it's like, we're getting all these really cool, like, you know, Torbjorn's Viking skin, which changes it, uh, his entire appearance, like, completely. Whereas, like, a lot yeah. of the epic skins, they change a good amount of it, but there's you can still see the base model to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Like, when you think of Reinhardt's ghost skin, like, it's still... The difference is he's got his helmet off, and he's got a little flame, right? You know, blue flame and different color scheme, right? Or you think yeah. of, like, the... Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da, the um Ferris skin that's all purple and she's got like you know glowing cracks all over her body right like that's mm -hmm. that's just a, her skin but with this cool eerie effect so it's it's one of those things that is a kind of unfortunate i wish that they would actually try and make more epic skins because epic skins are a lot easier to buy <laughs> <laughs> whereas legendaries are especially during events like this like if you want to get the new new ones then you're going to be dropping like 3,000 gold which is a lot like okay oh. like I, it's, I don't want to get into it because it's a whole other discussion but Blizzard please just take the crafting system from Hearthstone and put it into this game if we could just take the skins we don't want and convert them into gold we wouldn't have any problems <sighs> Turn all those all those mercy skins I got into yeah into some some credits yeah. but uh but yeah yeah it's looking like a cool event I don't know if I'll be able to play because like my PlayStation Plus ran out and with how busy school has been I don't know how much I'll I'll be able to play so I'm like I should I even waste the money getting PlayStation mm -hmm. Plus to like not play at all but um we'll see we'll see but all in all it's a pretty cool event um mm -hmm. shout out to blizzard they brought junkenstein's revenge back because of how popular it was it's on eichenwald now instead of it's always been on eichenwald okay it's on a different part of eichenwald. it's a different part no it's not is it on a different i haven't played it yet i know that there's new characters that you can play you can play as you guys you can play as torbjorn genji um widowmaker and somebody and zenyatta yeah um so the quick play i'm throwing team pretty much um and it is kind of that is very true except well maybe not zen because then zen, but he, but he, he, torb he, but torb genji and widowmaker really fit that to a certain extent <laughs> yep that is the quick play i'm throwing team and you know i'm going to throw from from that uh 
from that final statement into our question of the day. Hey. So, our question of the day from the lovely J Streets. Shout out to J Streets. There it is. Got it. Uh, J Street asks, what is the best way to shake off being tilted slash salty? So pretty much saying, if you run into a game with a Genji, a Torbjörn, and a Widowmaker, how do you not let that frustration transfer into the next game that you play? Um, well, that's a, well, it's, it's hard because it, it, uh, when you, when we break this question down, it really depends on how competitive you are as a player, like realistically, hmm. cause like usually, cause I think about like, if I'm playing with a team that's like, okay, there's one person that's throwing, I'll usually stay till the very end. I'll try my best. Right. And then it's like, all right, whatever, you know, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah. but then I'll be like, all right, well, I'll, I'll leave. So at the very least, you know, maybe I won't, I'll, I'll leave to, I'll, 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 usually how this works is that if I'm playing with a, like a person who's like, com- like just throwing for the sake of throwing, yeah. then I'll finish the game. I'll leave so that I can hopefully get queued with a different group of people. Um, so that way I'm like, all right, we're starting out strong, starting out fresh. Right. But it's yeah. like, but it's also like, it's hard because for me, when I'm playing like, you know, like, and this is something that it's like me and my friends have very different opinions about how they deal with this. Like, there are people that are like, okay, let's just accept a defeat so that we can move on to the next game, right? That's how that's how some other people deal with saltiness. It's like, okay, we've lost this game. Just give up the round. Don't even bother going in because there's no point, right? Yeah. And that's how they deal with the saltiness slash, you know, getting tilted. Um, me, I'm usually the opposite. Usually I'm like, I'm going to keep trying, even though we're in a bad situation till the very end, I'm going to keep going because there's a chance. There's a small, small chance that we can turn this around. And as long as that exists, I'm going to keep trying. Right. And that's usually what happens to me. It's hard because I don't, cause it's, it's really, honestly, it really boils down to how competitive you are and like sometimes you just need to like literally if you don't if if you're feeling salty or tilted like sometimes you do need to literally as stupid as it sounds take like a five minute break (laughs) as stupid as that sounds sometimes that does make a difference it really does because if you're already feeling pissed off and you immediately go into the next game and you I feel that people have a tendency to look for things that are going wrong immediately, right? They go, oh God, that, you know, that one misplay. Oh, we, we, we're done. We've lost. It's, it's why even bother? This team is garbage. You know, it's like, and it, they're, they're almost like they're, they want the vindication so that they feel right to be, yeah. feel this way. Right. So that's why yeah. sometimes you have to like literally take the time to calm down. <laughs> Like that, that, I guess that's kind of my answer. Like as best as I can, cause it's weird. Cause if, as far as me feeling salty, when it comes to competitive games, as long as I know I personally tried my best, I usually don't feel mad. Right. I usually don't get salty. I, I get way, I generally personally with me, I generally get way more frustrated when I'm playing single player games and some random bullshit happens and then I've lost like 40 minutes of grinding due to one mistake, right? I get yeah. really salt I get really tilted and salty then because that is a complete waste of 40 minutes. Like I learned nothing, I gained nothing because of some bullshit. So, I don't know. I would say literally that would be my answer realistically. Is that sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're playing, obviously if you're playing with someone who is throwing the game, you know, just finish the game, you know, re with a different team, go with it with a positive attitude, try and go with like, okay, we're starting fresh. I've got some new players. Let's see how this goes. And if that is not helping, like literally just take five minutes. Like it doesn't have to be long because if you're just going straight in, if you're just going straight from game to game to game to game, it's just going to keep piling up. They're going to fall from round two to round twenty-five in Hearthstone in yeah. one night. Yeah, yeah. It, realistically, it's that's what happens. But what about you? What's your answer for? I'm very interested because you and I are very different when it comes to competitiveness. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, for me, it's 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 pretty straightforward, man. Just take a break. I mean, now we never we never want to do it. We always like, oh, you know, just one more game. The next game will fix it. The next game will fix it, right? But like, I want to say, I want, you know, I like throwing out numbers, just pulling numbers out of my ass. But I can mm-hmm. safely say that that is wrong most of the time. Most of the time, the next game will not fix it. The next game will only add to the frustration. There's times, in fact, where I've won the next game and I've still been angry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, honestly, just take a break. Now, I'll, I mean, it's two things. One is, you know, don't take it so seriously, you know. Um, um, but then, you know, at the end of the day, like, we all get mad. That's, that's only, that's mm-hmm. only, it's only, it's only human. We all get mad. So, um, so yeah, I'd say, first of all, um, try not to take it too seriously. You know, if, if, like, things aren't going too well, just, you know, look on the bright side. You could be, um. You could be like me. And having to refight a fifty-minute boss fight four times in a row. Well, I was gonna say you could have cancer, but that works too. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. I guess my my pain means nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'll just try to put it into perspective. But yeah, yeah, that works too. That works too. Thanks, Dad. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. So. So yeah, yeah. Like, just just try not to take it too seriously. Um. Um. And then you know. When, when you do find yourself getting mad, just take a break. Mm-hmm. Take a break. Like, real talk, I took my office chair and I flung it across a wall once. Uh, <laughs> sorry, across my apartment once into into a wall. What, um, game, what game made you do that? I'm curious. Um, Hearthstone. Oh, really? It was Hearthstone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, um, I shield slammed um, a character and nothing happened. And I was like, what? Why? And I just picked up my office chair and I flung it across the room. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, no. There's I'm something sure. about there's something about playing like a tr- a card game and that level of rage just happening that I find very entertaining. <laughs> uh. But then again, like all games can can <laughs> like all games can reach that level. I've I've seen some very uh, I've seen some amazing clips of Cuphead in which people are like sli- like punching through their chair in f- <laughs> in frustration. <laughs> but anyway, like like I said, I think take at the end of the day, I think the answer is literally just take a breather, take a break, you know, cuz it really like literally taking 5 minutes can make a huge difference. It really can. Uh, so I think that's going to be our answer. But uh, good question, J Streets, as always. And if you got a question for us, uh, don't forget to leave it in the comment section. And we'll make sure to answer it in the next podcast. And as always, this is your host, Room Liberty, and... Oh, that's what happened. You see? And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.